Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Welcome everyone to Triple T Transport. Stay in your lane. Uh, this is the second part of our podcast on uh, cargo theft. You know, we talked in the previous episode about cargo theft looks different than it has in years past due to technology. But how is the technology impacting the industry in a negative way? So at this moment, I'd like to reach out to John. Mr. Pruitt? Yeah. So a uh, quick intro, uh, John Pruitt, I'm uh, Director of Logistics at, C4, at uh, Nutribolt. I even say C4 Energy because people see the yellow can C4 Energy and that's what they know. Um, Anyway, fantastic product, got a lot of stuff going on, but um, yeah, it, it's it's been uh, quite a ride with, um, you know, just the changes that have, ha have impacted, um, you know, us with uh, cargo theft and just related activities. So, for example, I think we've all been in transportation or been involved in our industries over the past 10 or, or longer, more years. Myself, I'm 30, this is 31 years here at Triple T. So, when we had an analog system and everybody was doing things manually and systems weren't integrated and the TMS system was a, a new item or a, a less used item from a, a, an overall logistics or national level perspective, we didn't have these opportunities for the theft. So this is more a, a technology has outpaced security so we all have we all see the value in technology. John, you guys use a TMS system, correct? Correct. Uh, Paul, you're familiar with the, most of the TMS systems, as am I. Uh, I am. And, and you actually are on the tech side from a software perspective. Uh, you also have another company, uh, correct? Can you share what they do and what you do there? Yeah, it's called ShipperCRM.com. Uh, we essentially have a shipper database. We are collecting data on shippers and essentially uh, we want to be the world's largest shipper database. So say if you're a freight broker or, or transportation provider and you want to see what kind of customers you have in your given area, you can pull up shipper CRM and you'll have, you'll just see a whole map of the United States with shippers everywhere. You click on a shipper, pulls up their information, their, their description, what commodity they, they ship, how much revenue they did, people they should contact that are, that are decisions makers on the logistics side of things. Um, so we actually implement, uh, well, we verify every single one of our customers. So when they apply to be a customer, first they apply to be a customer, we take their MC and we verify that everything is actually indeed uh, true. We don't want any, uh, you know, any shady players in our, using our software, especially since they could go on and try to like take shipper information and try to maybe pretend to be a shipper. That's something that we've been seeing recently is that uh, there are people impersonating, impersonating shippers. And Cassandra Gaines from Carrier Sure actually was mentioned, talking about this, uh, I believe, this week on LinkedIn. Uh, so that's, that's a new scam that's going on in the industry. Uh, and it seems that uh, every few weeks we have this kind of new creative way that scammers are in infiltrating the industry using various uh, I guess techniques, uh, and one of those is actually being a, being a shipper, impersonating a shipper, uh, and they call up a brokerage or a trucking company, and they give them fake loads. Uh, but essentially, yeah, so that's that's our software, and we do have a system to verify everyone that comes in. We don't let anyone that has a Gmail or Yahoo account actually be applied or, to our company uh, to work or to be using the software. You actually have to have a domain registered, and that's something that we've also. I've seen a lot of shady players use at Gmail, at Yahoo uh, domains. Absolutely. We see it also. Now, uh, Elizabeth, I'm going I'm to reach out to you on this one, North Carolina Retail Merchants Association. Have, have your retailers used technology differently, You would you say, in the past five or 10 years, like everyone else in the industry? Oh, absolutely. You know, and I think it goes across all aspects of the business, whether it's, you know, how they're doing omni-channel on selling to the customer or how they're doing their surveillance, because there are a lot more surveillance technologies available now. Um, and as I'm here in this conversation, you know, I'm thinking of it from a little bit different lens in that I think you also could see, you know, increased activity in the cargo theft space because 
sort of traditional organized retail crime has been in-store activity where you have boosters going into a store, bringing back product to then be fenced. Um, all of that surveillance around that has definitely um, become much more sophisticated. And so, um, you know, typically supply follows demand and where now there are a lot more platforms available to fence that product than there were before. It's a lot easier to resell product in online spaces. Um, the world just globally is a lot more connected as a marketplace. And so being able to still large palletized goods, I think becomes um, more of an avenue for some of these organized retail crime rings we see operating because they likely have a broader marketplace to be able to resell that product. You bring up a really good point. And, and they don't have to have someone go shoplifting. They, That's they get right. It, and, and get it before that. And, and, and you know, some of the conversation in, in our, our earlier um, episode was um, that it is kind of difficult to track because a lot of this is happening sort of behind the scenes through some of these means of technology. And so it's not quite as front facing um, what we're seeing in the cargo theft space, um, which which can make it trickier um, when you're trying to solve some of these cases. Oh, absolutely. And Thomas, uh, I'm sure that you can probably speak to, um, you know, from a legal perspective, how do you go after them? <laughs> it's difficult. Um, these these cases are obviously contact law enforcement first. There, there are ways to track IP addresses, right. um, which can be helpful. I mean, depending on what the exact example is, you know, say it comes from a load board, um, you can sort of follow the, the thread of the person that uh, registered at the load board. How did they, how are they able to do that? Um, what information did they use? Um, was there a um, a notification sent to um, the person being or the entity being impersonated? Uh, it's very difficult, particularly when it's a foreign actor or something like that. I mean, it's to 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 sort of pin liability on the actual wrongdoer. It right. almost becomes. The liability falls on the person that was in the best situation to have prevented it versus um, the person who actually did the bad thing. Um, so to re repeat that again for our listeners. The liability falls on the on the person who is in the best position to have prevented uh, the fraud. And that's an unfortunate reality. Um, not I mean, obviously, the fraudster, um, the wrongdoer, if you could ever get to them. Uh, should be prosecuted and held responsible. But if it's someone in another country who you're just never going to catch, I mean, obviously you turn that type of stuff over to the FBI and they do their best. Um, and eventually, you know, sometimes they can get those kind of folks. Uh, but a lot of times they don't. Kathy, how do you deal with the insurance side of it? If If I'm the broker, let's say for hypothetical, and I think I'm doing business with somebody who's vetted. Everything matches up. Our processes are correct. And we think we know who we're, we're working with. How would you handle a claim when the actual processes are followed, but the technology has given the thief the upper hand? Yeah, well, uh, you know, Avalon provides insurance solutions for, you know, many logistics providers and in including property brokers who are arranging these loads and in hiring motor carriers. So, you know, we feel it's really important to review um, insurance programs, you know, it's especially true if a property broker has a policy that's been in force for, you know, quite some time and they tend to renew it as is each year and you know, and, and kind of get the process over with, um, you know, we, we want to make sure that, you know, their, their cargo program for, for theft has evolved just like cargo has. Um, and if their insurer is responding to the need for more, you know, enhanced cargo protection. So, you know, typically contingent cargo policies for property brokers will exclude um, coverage for dishonest acts of the carrier or, you know, fraudulent pickups, but there are endorsements that are available um, where coverage can be added back on. 
um, for these um, for these scenarios. Uh, dishonest acts of carriers. So an example of where there's you know an inside job and the driver or the carrier is complicit. Um, but you know most cargo policies that the carrier would have their motor truck cargo policy will exclude. Um, these types of scenarios for a dishonest act by their employee with the thought that this type of coverage would be, um, you know, covered else as someone under some other policy, a crime policy or a fidelity bond. Uh, but there's also dishonest acts of third parties an endorsement that can be added to a contingent um, cargo policy for deceptive pickups and for situations where the uh, carrier's identity has been, you know, compromised and, and the load is stolen. Um, so we really encourage property brokers to look at their coverage to make sure that they have these enhanced cargo protections uh, for these new types of cargo thefts and, and cyber crimes that are, you know, contributing to cargo theft. Um, and while, you know, reading your insurance policy may not be the, you know, the thing that you love to do, you know, that's what your insurance broker is there for to help you navigate that process and, and to review your policy. Um, you know, ask if if your coverage would um, uh, protect you in these in these scenarios, and if not, you know, what can you do to to make sure that it does? Wow! So there is insurance available for it. There is insurance available for for these types of deceptive pickups. Um, so you know, certainly we encourage you know folks to read their policies and and uh, make sure they understand what they have and and ask for help if they don't. There you go, everyone. You heard it there. That's why we have Avalon involved. Paul, um, on on your take here, so we've, uh, I want to run this by you. We know it doesn't look like it did five or 10 years ago, cargo theft. The cybercrime, uh, identity theft, and technology tools that are the industry has adopted and using from an efficiency perspective and a value are causing the problems that we're seeing from a, a theft perspective. And looking at this, as we, you know, as we change our safeguards, what do you think that this is going to lead to? I believe that as a whole, it really comes down to the entity to be really proactive in their approach when it comes to finding the right partners, the right carriers. Um, and it's it's difficult to say what, what will exactly happen. I, I, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, and I, I don't want to speculate. All I could say is that the people that will utilize the right technology and work with trusted partners, relationship-based partners, uh, won't have as many problems and issues as those that work on more of a transactional approach and always find maybe the cheapest carriers or Find, find rates or loads that are maybe too good to be true because typically those are the ones that uh, end up being somewhat fraudulent. I would agree with you 100%. Uh, guys, thank you for participating on this episode. Uh, stay tuned for next week. We're going to end it here. Uh, we're going to have everybody back next week and we're going to continue this discussion because I'm going to start to unveil the processes and the practices from our task force individuals, uh, Alfredo Chen and Gil Gasco in Southern California on our cargo theft task force that we're working with, I'm going to unveil what they say are best practices to eliminate this. All right, stay tuned for next week. Thank you everyone for watching Stay In Your Lane. Continue watching on the next episode of the Stay In Your Lane podcast. 